Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. For the friends, who are not native speakers, you can turn on subtitles. Tick control, is one of the most common applications of PMSM. One of the best known examples, is the case of a PMSM used in an electric car, where imitating the pedal control of, a gasoline vehicle, is intended to give the driver the impression of having better control of the situation. In this application, the electrical torque control signal, can be obtained from the interpretation of the pedal force, and then the electrical torque control is used to achieve the control objective. This video explains how to design PI control systems to achieve torque control. Electromagnetic torque TE comprises, two terms, the first term being proportional to the current on the Q axis, and the second term being proportional to the product ID times IQ. Due to this relationship, the control of the electromagnetic torque, is achieved by controlling the D-axis and Q-axis currents. A surface-mounted PMSM. The inductors LD and LQ are identical, so that the second term, from the dynamic structure of the PMSM becomes zero. The relationship between electromagnetic torque and Q-axis current, for a surface-mounted PMSM is therefore, control the electromagnetic torque, the current of the Q-axis, must therefore be controlled. The current reference signal IQ, is calculated using this steady state relationship. If it is an internally mounted PMSM, the second term is not zero. By approximation using an expansion of the Taylor series, the term will be operating a PMSM motor. It is common practice to set the steady state value of the D-axis current to zero, so that the Q-axis current set point signal is calculated with this relationship. In these equations for the PMSM dynamic electrical model, nonlinear cross-coupling terms exist through these products and variables, and these cross-coupling terms can be eliminated by feedforward manipulation. The idea, is to use auxiliary variables for VD and VQ such as By inserting these equations into the electrodynamic model, we obtain first order models, for the electrical part of the machine dynamics. Based on these two models, two feedback controllers can be designed, for the state of current control, by manipulating the auxiliary state of voltages in the DQ frame. Because the set point signals to the D and Q current loops, are constant or piecewise constant as stated previously, in order to ensure zero steady state errors, to a given reference signal, for the first order dynamics, in the current dynamic models, PI controllers are best suited to these applications. Using a proportional gain KC and an integral time constant tau I, the PI controller for the D-axis current control has the following form. A similar PI controller form, is assumed for the Q-axis current control. Using feedforward manipulation as stated previously, the actual control signal, which is the D-axis voltage, is calculated using this relationship. Therefore this figure, shows the D-axis current control, using nonlinear feedforward compensation. Similar procedure is applied for the Q-axis current control leading to the computation of the control signal, which is the Q-axis voltage. Similarly, this figure illustrates the PI controller structure, for controlling the electromagnetic torque, using nonlinear feedforward compensation. Using the first order models, for the electrical part of the machine dynamics, the Laplace transfer functions for this are obtained. Transfer function of the PI controller, for the D-axis current loop has this form. Based on the design approach, introduced in the first videos in this playlist, the proportional gain and the integral time constant for the PI controller, are determined using pole assignment controller design. Similarly, these are the PI controller parameters, for the control of Q-axis current. In the design, the damping coefficient zeta, is selected to be 0.707, 
and the natural frequency omega n, is selected to determine, the desired closed loop settling time, which also corresponds to the desired bandwidth, of the closed loop system. The larger omega n is, the shorter the desired closed loop settling time is. It is also useful, to choose this parameter, relative to the bandwidth of the open loop system. Here, we can use a parameter, to calculate the desired closed loop bandwidth for use in the d-axis current control, and for the q-axis current control. In the next video, we will develop the velocity controller of PMSM, so that we can simulate, the cascade feedback controller velocity of PMSM, with this both PI current controllers. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.